Admittedly, there's plenty of life in Denmark videos out there, but it's always nice to get new perspectives. And I'm a young professional who do produce here in Copenhagen, so I might be able to give you a bit of a different viewpoint than others. But before we get into this video, let's put this out there. I'm an able-bodied white male with an EU passport, so I sort of won the immigration lottery, if there is one. I think this is important to point out, because moving here was fairly easy for me and my partner, but there are a ton of horror stories of what some immigrants and experts have to go through to be able to stay and stay together. Also, we both very much like living in Copenhagen. So while Denmark is not perfect, we chose to be here and are happy to be able to do so. So this video is mostly positive. In this video, I will talk about the Danes and the language, housing, higher education and general life in Copenhagen. Then I will have a follow-up video about being a parent here, work, and some useful apps and sites that will make your life easier if you move here. So maybe you can subscribe if you don't want to miss out on it. But let's get to it. The Danes. I did not survey 5.5 million people before I made this video, so these are purely my observations and a reflection of the interactions that I had with them. I don't want to generalize all, but you might recognize some of the stuff if you visited Denmark before. Let's break the ice with some of the oddities that Danes do. They can carry anything on a bike. Literally anything. Suitcases, a double base, oversized paintings, anything. They also just love lamps. I love lamps. I don't remember seeing that many lamp shops in other countries that I visited before. Small lamp stores, big lamp stores, used lamp shops, posters of lamps. They all got them here. Potato salad comes in a doggy bag. Rice pudding is packaged like a roll of salami for whatever reason. And Danes also like to throw random English words and expressions into their sentences. It's just like in K-pop songs, but in real life. Yeah, they are awesome. It just works somehow. Overall, I would say the Danes are a pretty friendly and easygoing bunch. Especially in summer, it feels like everyone is non-stop smiling. We have a small kid and people are extremely friendly towards us when we are out and about. Be it the garbage man waving from the driver's seat to the teenager doing the checkout at the supermarket. So in everyday life, people are mostly chill and easy to get by with. But there are clearly boundaries. And a lot of foreigners mention the fact that Danes like to keep a small, very solid circle of close friends which is hard to get into. Now, this might be the case, but considering that I do have a few super nice Danes in my life, and most of my friends here are also foreigners, I might not be the right person to speak about this. If you really want to know more about the Danes in general, I would highly recommend reading this book called The Little Book of Hygge, written by Mike Viking. This book has a pretty good overview of a lot of their cultural habits, their approach to life and people, and it also contains some interesting statistics, such as Danes are supposedly eating the most amount of sugar in Europe, along with the Finns. I actually enjoyed reading this book after I moved here. It was a fun read, and I think the design is super cool. But if I can point out just one thing, I feel like this book describing the typical Dane as an upper middle class white person living in a nice apartment in inner Copenhagen is a bit too romanticized for me. Nonetheless, I would recommend reading it if you are thinking about moving here. The language. The language is tough. There is simply no other way to put this. The pronunciation is difficult, and while I can get around in three different languages, Danish is one that I have yet to grasp. I'm not too sure if Danes do realize this issue, but there's clearly a language barrier between them as well while speaking their own language. Considering that one of the most used words I keep hearing from them is vel, which tells me that they don't even understand each other either. On the other hand, whenever I have a friend visiting me from outside of Denmark and they go up to the store staff and innocently ask them, hey, do you speak English? Then there's a visible confusion on the clerk's face. Because yes, they do speak English. They speak English like a champ. And I would argue that this is another problem for foreigners here, because when everyone around you speaks English to this level, you don't feel the need to put more effort into your Danish. I can easily have a conversation with my neighbor in English, who is over 70, and most of the time we have no problem understanding each other. So speaking the language is a task that I have yet to tackle, but considering that I have a kid who will eventually bring home their math homework in Danish, I need to be prepared. Housing. Finding a place to live in Copenhagen is super easy and stress-free if you got the money. If you don't, then things get a little bit more tricky. It is super expensive to rent here, and you have to be on your toes when you're just starting out not to get scammed. I would say that you have three main options to start with. Rent from companies like Deas or Boulder, which is again, not cheap, but at least you won't get scammed. Or try to find a place yourself on one of the many Facebook groups 
or what are the websites that have private landlords advertising, such as Bully Portal. Now, here you can find good deals, but there are also a lot of scumbags out there preying on newcomers to the city, so be aware. Or lastly, join the waiting list for a public housing list owned by one of the companies such as KAB or SAB. This is clearly the best option, because you can get pretty awesome places, there are a ton of choices, and the price is just stupidly great. Well, the only downside is that you might have to wait for 15 fucking years to get a place. But hey, the hope is there. But there is a whole nother level to Copenhagen that is not often spoken of in the expat housing Facebook groups or in these kind of videos on YouTube, the suburbs in which I happen to reside. Now I get it, this is not the place that TripAdvisor would recommend you to visit. Like, why would they? But we are also people with families, dreams, plumbing and fiber internet. Yeah, I might not have a bougie organic vegan cafe in my neighborhood, which kind of sucks actually, but my family managed to snag one of those houses from those long waiting lists and it is a pretty big place and easily under half the price of the private housing market. We got a little kid, there are tons of parks here, not much traffic, and the daycare is just around the corner, and I have neighbors that I actually really like and talk to often. Admittedly, I wish I was a bit closer to the city center, but a fairly short bike ride can take me there, therefore I don't really have much to complain about. Maybe the suburbs is something that you can explore if you are looking for a place to live, especially with a family. So be careful out there looking for a place. I don't want to be too negative about this, but you can read quite a few bad stories about how people got cheated out of their money, which sucks. Luckily, there's free legal help available. There's also the LLO and even a private company around to help you if you think that you are being scammed or overcharged for your place. Again, I will leave a few links in the description for you. Higher education. I actually wanted to make a whole separate video around this topic, considering that I have finished a BA here in Copenhagen, but recently the government has decided to cut back on the types of courses taught in English that I have completed, so as of now there is not much left to talk about. A lot of unis still offer English courses, so there are still possibilities to come and study here, but after a few years here in Denmark, looking at the situation for international students, it seems to be getting harder, unfortunately. Please come and tell me that I am wrong about this in the comments. I would be quite happy to be corrected on this. So because of this situation, I would rather not waste much time on this topic in this video anymore. But if you're interested in what it's like to be an international student here in Copenhagen, completing a design education, I created a super detailed vlog series about this on my channel, so you can check that out. Life in Copenhagen. It is great. Like, really, really great. Why else would we choose to stay here? I briefly talked about the difficulty of integrating with the Danes, so here is a quick guide if you want to blend in with the locals by looking like one. It is actually fairly easy to get the quintessential Copenhagen look. You'll only need three things for this. A dead cap, preferably from a local brand, a longer coat, and white sneakers. The puffier, the better. Anything else you wear under it, it doesn't really matter. In fact, I'm not even wearing pants right now. After you blend in, you'll notice that the city is beautiful, pretty safe, full of exciting things to do, and riding your bike everywhere is just a bliss. The airport is well connected to the city by 24-7 public transport, and you get to fly out to most corners of the globe. But there are some things that I really don't like here. The wastefulness is just crazy. You know, Denmark is a rich country, and I feel like that a lot of people just don't give a hoot about the environment here. Yeah, yeah, I know, Copenhagen is the most sustainable city or whatever, but I feel that there is no personal responsibility taken on by a lot of people living here. I might live in a bad area where a lot of my neighbors cannot seem to tell the difference between a beer can and a pizza box when it comes to sorting their trash, but this is something that really annoys me. I think this rich wastefulness comes out in the little things, such as a habit that I have also picked up and trying to stop, is to throw food items into my basket at the supermarket. I know that this is such a small thing, but a lot of people do this, and I think it's kind of disrespectful. Also when it comes to having a good time for a lot of Danes, that means a bad time for Mother Earth. People leave shit around after they had their good time, as it is assumed that it's someone else's job to clean up after them, see festivals in the local parks, or watching football together in a public space. New Year's is also a pretty good example for this. And I know it's once a year, let them have a good time. But if you are a 30 year old smart person with a truckload of explosives, couldn't you just clean up after yourself? I ain't no angel in this either. I am literally drowning in plastic. But 
I don't know what can you do when even the most basic vegetables are already packaged in plastic in the supermarket. It's a challenge. As I said, life is good here and has been good for a very long time when you think about what happened to other countries in the rest of Europe in the past 70 to 80 years. The streets of Copenhagen and the air is clean and there is a very solid warfare system that catches most people who need help, which I am truly grateful for and I'm happy to contribute to with my extremely high taxes. So I do understand why people here have this mindset that everything is okay and I and will be okay forever. But there are obvious things behind the curtain if you are willing to look. When I originally moved here a few years ago and got my paperwork done from the citizen service and the lady at the counter said to me, welcome to Denmark, that just felt so amazingly good. I've been an expat immigrant for the past 14 years in several different countries and no official person have ever said that to me. So hearing that after I moved here was just nice, really nice. If you have a chance to move to Copenhagen, I would highly recommend you to do it. Seemingly, I have a weird fetish for living in expensive cities around the world, such as Tokyo or Melbourne and now Copenhagen. But I feel like this place, while it is expensive, gives back a lot to me and my family. And we can have a great quality of life here, and I'm very grateful for that. So probably this video is already super long, therefore I will stop over here. But I will make another one about working and parenting in Copenhagen, so maybe subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on it. Oh. And there are a ton of vegetarian and vegan places and options around here. And that also makes me super happy. Maybe you can take use of it as well. Bye. The Danes. The Danes. The Danes is a bit too romanti romanticized for me. Is a bit too romantic.